Hey, Dr. G. Hey, Nurse Chris. How's it going today? Good. Good. Yeah. You know, I was just noticing that a lot of nurses know how to put in IVs, but a lot of nurses don't know how to put in IVs sure. or an ultrasound. That's funny because a lot of physicians know how to place ultrasound guided IVs, but they have no clue how to put it in without an ultrasound. You know what I was thinking? Probably the same thing I was thinking. It would be good to have a tutorial. On placing an IV both with, with and without an ultrasound. Exactly. Great. A, a guide, guide for everyone. everyone. So this is a peripheral IV, and um, what I like to do is find the best spot, what we think we're going to use. And for me, as usually the last of the options, they tend to be a little bit um, thinner as far as at the back of the hand and the tendons. I prefer forearm if at all possible, AC if we know we're going to need a CAT scan. Um, putting the tourniquet on first and then just allowing for a moment or two of the veins to be able to puff up and prevent present themselves. Um, mid forearms are usually very nice because they tend to be the most straight. Um, and if I can't, then the AC is going to be the one that we're going to be able to see and feel usually the best. For this particular patient, I'm going to use probably this guy right here. It tends to be nice and straight, and it's got good puffiness to it. Cleaning it or getting some alcohol on top of it will allow it to kind of shine and get a sheen on it. So once we do that, we have to prep this for 30-second scrub and then a 15-second or so dry time. And uh, just feeling all the way down, I can feel the vein on the top. And also putting a little bit of uh, proximal pressure down too will show the vein up even more. The IV uh, size-wise is also going to be a factor of if we need to do a CAT scan, we'll definitely be looking at an 18. For this particular one, demonstration purposes, we'll just do a 20. Since this is a, a thinner arm without a lot of subcutaneous um, tissue over the top of the vein, I can see it very easily, so I won't need to do any kind of aggressive angle. I would say maybe a 10 to 15 degree angle on this. Um, there's, uh, for me, I usually go a little bit on the side and then enter the vein. Um, for these big veins that are nice and easy, though, I can just, I know there's enough room for the catheter, so my um, also determining factor is making sure that I have enough room to where this catheter is going to end up. So I have to plan ahead. So I'm going to poke down here. This is a straight section of the vein, so I know that that's going to end up and be enough room for it to go. If I can't feel the whole vein all the way up, sometimes I might need to back up and go where I can feel it and have the catheter end in that particular spot. So I'm going to uh, usually just tell the patient I'll count to three. I prefer a little quicker technique than going slow, so poke on three, one, two, three. Once I get in, I look in my chamber, I'll see a flash, and then I advance just a little bit more, and then the catheter can go up. I'll bring that all the way back. Now at this point in time, I can easily do a blood draw. So I would take this, we'll go underneath this, and use a vacuum tainer to draw the blood. Um, I can release a tourniquet. We don't want to keep it on for more than a couple of minutes at the most. Um, distal pressure to the catheter when this comes off, and then my insertion of my saline lock, and then flush at that point in time can go on. Also, I can release a little pressure to make sure I do have blood that comes all the way down, and I do at that point in time. For this example purposes, I'll just use the small saline lock hub, twist that on, always draw back a little bit to make sure I got good flow, and then just feeling also too, so that goes, flushes nicely and it's easy to get at. Take the sharps out of the way, and then also too, just cleaning around this area to prevents or helps the sticker stick nicely. We have the little tigoderms that has a window that can show also the color of the hub so you can see it easily and then um, also you can see distal to the IV. I prefer a lock strip underneath the part of the tigoderm here that helps to hold that, hold that down. Signing and then dating the time and the size of the IV just so everyone is aware and then where it comes from versus EMS versus ours, so that's a peripheral IV in a nutshell. Needless to say, not all patient arms look like this. When a challenging situation presents itself, I turn to ultrasound. On the ultrasound machine, use the linear probe.
The only adjustments you may need to make are depth and gain. Depth controls the depth of the image, and gain controls the brightness of the image. Generally, the image will have a number somewhere on the screen that indicates the total depth. In this case, it is 4.3 centimeters. Be sure that the probe is oriented so that your left side correlates with the left on the probe and the left on the screen. You want to be sure that when you are doing the procedure and moving your needle left, it moves left on the screen as well. There is a marker on the probe that will correlate with a dot on the screen. If you are unsure, put a bit of ultrasound gel on one side of the probe and watch it on the screen. Or just touch one side with your finger while watching the screen. I have two techniques for ultrasound guidance. It all depends on how deep the vein is. I start out scanning around the antecubital area and look for some of the common veins. Any veins in the antecube itself. Sometimes these are there even if they can't be felt. Two, the cephalic vein, which is actually quite superficial and runs up the front of the arm. Three, the basilic vein, which is a bit deeper and runs along the inside of the arm. And finally, four, the deep brachial veins, which is actually a triad of two veins and one artery and runs deep to the basilic vein along the inside of the arm. Be sure what you are aiming for is a vein, confirmed by the fact that it is easily compressible like this. The color on Doppler shows direction of flow, not artery or vein. As you can see here, just by rocking the probe, we turn it from red to blue. It's just like magic. If the antecube has been used already, you can trace the cephalic vein farther up the arm. Both the basilic and cephalic veins are nice targets because they tend to be relatively superficial and isolated from other important structures like nerves and arteries. If you find a vein within a couple millimeters of the surface, I like to mark it and set the ultrasound aside because it is an easier procedure if you aren't doing two things at once. To mark it, center the vein under the probe and take a pen with the tip retracted. Place the pen in the center of the probe and make a mark over the vein. The pen will leave a nice circle that is visible even after the most vigorous, sterile prep scrubbing. Before moving on to place the IV, place the probe over the mark so that it's midline. Notice where the vein is on the image. It may be a millimeter or two off of midline. Just make a mental note of this when you're doing the procedure. In this case, the vein is one millimeter to the left, and so I will be aiming to the left side of the circle mark. Put the probe away, wipe off all of the ultrasound gel, prep the skin, and advance the catheter. Remember, you will be entering the vein at the mark, so enter the skin a centimeter or so distal. If I go in and am struggling to find the vein, I will bring the probe back and set it a centimeter or so away from my insertion site so as not to contaminate it. Then, watch the IV go into the vein like this. If the only available vein lies deeper than a few millimeters, I will use real-time ultrasound guidance and a longer IV catheter. While I don't recommend any specific product, this 18-gauge, 2.5-inch catheter made by Bibron is highly effective. To do this, you can use a transverse approach or an inline approach. The deeper the vein, the more I recommend an inline approach. After identifying the general area that you will go with ultrasound, set the probe aside, wipe all of the gel off of the probe, clean the skin with chlorhexidine, apply a probe cover to the ultrasound probe, Large tegaderms are a cheap and effective option. Place sterile gel on the skin and apply the probe. Find the vein and enter the skin with the catheter at a 45 degree angle. Advance it while tracking it with the probe. You can use long axis like this and watch the needle enter the vein. It requires you to be perfectly in line with the needle, but this takes practice. The alternative is to watch transverse. 
you have to slide the probe as you advance the needle so that you can keep an eye on the tip of the needle. Sometimes you may see the tissue move more than the needle itself. In any case, when you get a flash of blood, advance the needle one millimeter and then slide the catheter into the vein. You can inject a bit of lidocaine to make the procedure more comfortable, but usually by the time ultrasound is used, the patient is just anxious to get it done, and so I usually don't use any anesthetic. Oh, hey, Dr. Z. Hey, Nurse Chris. How's it going? Not too bad. Good. You know, I was thinking we need a tutorial on ultrasound-guided IVs. Wouldn't it be nice? If we had a tutorial on ultrasounded guided oh, IVs. A guide for everyone. Okay, that was so close. You know what I was thinking? What were you thinking? Well, <laughs> <laughs>